to me, the, the history of music is, is a history of taste. You know, and usually the composer is in the forefront. They just get tired of the same old sounds and they want to do something different. They, they hear something different and they, the only way they can express themselves. I mean, I, it would be very difficult for me to go back and write a completely chromatic piece now. You know, very difficult. I don't, I don't think I could hear it because, I mean, my, my ears just don't work that way. And um, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, that that opposition is is still with us. But I think it's always a, a good thing. I mean, you know, I, uh, I wish I could remember. There's a there's a famous story of of Ma, the young Mahler and Brahms taking a, a walk. You know and uh, by a river or something, and oh, I can't remember it. But I, some smaller said something like, "Well, things flow, and and the young the young are always right." And Brahm said something like, "Well, I'm not so sure." <laughs> Even back then. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and and of course, back to Monteverdi. I mean, Monteverdi, uh, the the. Uh, the the new practice came in, you know. Uh, what opposition it faced from from Palestrina and other, I mean, people who represented Palestrina's music and and so on, and from the church, you know. But um, no, it's always been with us and always will be with us. And good composers are produced who do one or the other, or or try somehow to combine the two. You know, um, I think the ideal of, of uh, uh, Mozart is who took everything he could and, and who was interested both in the past and the present and the future, or in, in all three rather, and uh, or, or uh, Bach, my God, has there ever been a piece further in advance of its time than the chromatic fantasy and fugue. You know, it's just, it's just an extraordinary work. And yet he was considered a very traditional composer, you know. Well, what, what's interesting about him, and, and I must say, this is something that's always been a goal of mine, that he preserved in writing instrumental music, which was the new thing then, especially you know, the new playing on stringed instruments and so on, the new techniques of stringed instruments, while, while pursuing and mastering everything that came along. He nevertheless kept alive the values of, uh, of the vocal tradition that had been going on for years in counterpoint, you know. And um, I think that that's one reason uh, why I was delighted at first with a synchet as an instrument because it was conceived in terms of three separate voices and then Bob's instruments were always conceived in terms of, of counterpoint. Bob was a, a you know not a not a, a bad pianist as you might know I don't, I don't know he could he could sit down and and play pretty well you know uh, and uh, no I, I, I think uh, you've you've got to somehow preserve the values of past music, but still write music that that you're writing on the very forefront of your sensibility. You know, in other words, somehow combine both things. That's why I speak about not living in the past or living in the future, but but somehow an eternal present. You know. Well, that, that sounds very presumptive, I guess. <laughs> <laughs>